Hi ladies, welcome back to Banana Club. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make an amazing little bag and I have sent you the notes and it's from, uh, um, it's off the internet so I have acknowledged the person that has um, designed the bag and also paid a licensing fee so I can show you the bag. Um, I do ask if you are going to produce these bags that you do go and pay the licensing fee as well. It's only $9. Um, because someone's given their time to produce the bag. So this is the little bag and it is a produce bag. So I've been to the farmer's market this morning and I filled it up with my produce and um, I decided to do a applique embroidery and then write apples on it. So I filled it up with apples but I've also gotten here my garlic and my tamarillos and my cheese from the farmer's market and my apples of course which are down the bottom and why I've made this particular bag out of a um, I've made it out of a very strong fabric called duck and the way the bag works is it has only one handle and then it has a loop and you thread the bag through the handle and I could carry it like this and it was very very strong and um, it didn't hurt my shoulder it was excellent so it's a very very good bag for carrying lots of weight so if you're going to be needing something stronger than a normal cotton then this is called duck and it's a thick cotton canvas fabric so that's what I've used for this bag now all the bags I'll show you shortly are all made out of a fat quarter so that's 50 centimeters by 55 okay so I'm just going to show you how you will cut your bag and bag handles out of an ordinary fabric because this particular one I've used webbing okay I'll just put my bag over here and hope it doesn't fall let's put it up okay so if you're starting with a fat quarter that is 50 by 55 centimeters which is funny because I'm going to tell you in inches now because most of you will realize that we're doing it in inches. So that's 22 inches by 20 inches. That is the size. Now I'm going to cut four inches off the top of my bag. Okay, so I'll just turn my board around here so you'll be able to see. And I'm going to line up my ruler. So I'll lay my fabric down so it's on line with one of my lines on my ruler. Try and sit it square so you can see. And then lay my ruler down on my four inch mark. There. And I cut straight across. So this is going to be the size of my bag. Here's my raw, this is a, um, uh, salvage edge so it's not going to be raw but this is a raw edge so if you want to you can overlock this edge first now I am going to do this today so you know that you can do this all on your sewing machine okay so if you want to overlock that edge you're going to use foot number two which is your overlock foot and the stitch you're going to choose is single overlock and it's usually about the third or fourth stitch on your machine. So foot number two, stitch number three or four, it's called single overlock. It will preset your width to four and a half and your length to 1.5. So if you don't have any presets on your machine, you will want to do that on your machine. Okay, so 4.5 width and about 1 high, 1.5 in height. Now, so I'm just going to thread this machine up. I'm just going to use black today so you can see the stitching that I'm going to be doing or else it's too hard to see if I stitch it in an ordinary colour. So I'm just putting my, threading my machine up, black thread. Now, I'm just going to turn this foot over. On the back of this foot, you can see that the foot has got a little bar. The bar goes through the back of the foot there. Can you see that little bar right there? Okay, the thread needs to come round there. So when you're using this foot, be a little bit careful not to yank the fabric, the thread sideways or pull it because you do not want to break that little bar. Okay, 
and that's the little bar that the stitch goes over. So I'm going to put my thread on, and if I put my thread to the side, it can't go around, so you need to go around that bar. Right, so I don't need to worry about my salvage edge, which is my salvage edge. Gosh, that's so tidy, I can hardly tell. So now I'm just going to go down my raw edge. These machines make wonderful sounds. So if you want to make sure that it's um, nice and neat and tidy, this is the stitch you're doing. And in fact, I will go across the bottom of my bag as well, because then it's all completely overlocked. I do not need to worry about the top of my bag, and I do not need to worry about my handle. And I found some wonderful produce fabric here to use for this bag. So that's my single overlock, and I'm going to do it down the side as well. If you've got an overlocker, of course, you can just whip across that with your overlocker. And the machine will only go the speed that it does the stitch correctly, so I can't make it go faster. I can only make it go slower by slowing it down. So I've slowed that down, now I'm going faster again. The single overlock I use a lot, um, mainly because I don't want to always change the thread on my overlock. Now what I'll do is I'll just turn this over to show you the stitch. So with a single overlock, it's straight stitches are down one side and then it goes out. Straight stitches down and then goes out and that what's, that's what stops your fabric from fraying okay so that's the stitch you want to do right so now here's the top of my bag the part that hasn't got any stitching on it and with the iron I'm going to turn it under a half an inch and then turn it under again and press it for my top edge I'm not stitching at this stage so I'll just make sure my irons on it is and I'll turn it under about half an inch. If you would like to rule it, use your little sewing gauge, these little ones here, and set it at half an inch. I just seem to eyeball it for this because it is only a produce bag. You do not need to be too particular unless you would like to. I've done it long enough, I should be able to get it quite even. Okay. Now the reason why I like to do that now, and I've put my scissors in a safe place, the reason why I like to do that now, it's all nicely pressed for later on, but now I can just open up that pressing line, and open up that pressing line here, sew down my side seam, and then re-press that down, and it's nice and tidy. If I had done this first, you would end up with your thread coming out there. So if you open it up, and you'll see once I've stitched it, and I'm going to straight stitch down there and then roll it up and everything's tidy. And I do that on, on clothing as well, on all my side seams. Press this hem up first, and then I go and do my side seam. And it's a nice tidy finish, which you'll see shortly. So now I'm going to put my machine on to straight stitch and it's about a one centimetre seam. I'm just going, I've got a little mark on my machine there so I'm just going to follow my line on my machine which you will do also. And this foot doesn't have anywhere for the thread to go down the crack of it, down the side. And so I just use my little tool and I bring my thread through. So normally you have a slit down the side of your foot, but this one doesn't have one. So now I'm just sewing down, following my line. I'm not worrying about pinning it because it is cotton fabric and it won't move. I've got my machine set on lock-off stitch and I forgot I had. 
so I didn't need to do all that stitching. Right, trim your thread, trim your thread so it's tidy. Now I'll just show you what I mean about this end. Oh, I'll press the seam open first. So I'm just going to press the seam open and then I'll show you. I'll make it nice and flat. Makes it nice and easy for the next couple of steps. So, here's the top of my bag. So now that I've done that seam first, I just refold it once and refold it twice and the top is nice and tidy. So that's why I like to do that that way. So it's nice and tidy. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put your seam on the right hand side. Fold my little top down. Put your bag together and get the halfway mark here and pop a pin in it so you can see it for later. And in fact, if you open that up now and you put your seam to your pin like that, you can now put a pin in the quarter marking as well. And these are very handy for later on. Okay, so there's my quarter marking and here's my quarter marking. Probably should have put the pin downwards so I didn't hurt myself. So there's my bag. Now, I'm now going to sew across the bottom of my bag. So I'm just going to give it a little light press there and sew across the bottom of my bag. Either way, doesn't matter. And I'm going to go this side and I'm just going to whip down the side over there so you can see that nice and clearly. And you can see the overlocking I've done there. And it's cotton fabric, so everything sits nice and flat. My seams are all pressed, so I won't have any problem. Now, with your bag, you could leave it a rectangle bag. But I want to put a base in my bag. Now what that means, I'll show you a bag I finished, is... I want to put a base in my bag. So I'm going to show you on the other bag how you do this and it's simply by folding your bag and the depth of this triangle here is going to make the shape and size of your bag. So if I turn this bag inside the right way, remembering these are all fat quarters, this is the height of my cheese bag. Okay? Same fabric, look at this one. Oops, I've made a few. Same amount of fabric, same bag, but look at the height I have on this bag. And the reason for that is my triangle that I've cut out and it's only a narrow base. So here's my, if I hold it in this hand and this one in this hand, you should be able to see it. So here is the base of this bag and here is the base of this bag. Same amount of fabric, but look at the different size bags you end up with. So this is a nice fat little bag for my cheese. And this is how it finishes. And this is a nice bag and somebody said that would fit two bottles of wine, but I don't drink so it won't. And also this would not be heavy enough. But look how different they are. It's quite amazing. So this time, I'm going to do mine, I'll do mine three centimetres from the edge. So you put your hand up inside the bag. I'll come around this way so you can see. And you've got a crease line that you won't be able to see, but you just fold your bag up till you've got a nice triangle. And if I turn it around this way, you can see it better. So it sits nice and flat and you have a triangle and this is where we're going to measure from here to here. So I'm going to press this triangle so I can show you and then you'll understand it. So you just open the bag out and press that triangle. So there you have your little triangle and I've just pressed the seam one way. So now with my ruler, what did I say, four centimetres? Three. All right. You just measure down and you're going to rule a line across. 
you can go two centimeters three centimeters three and a half four five six whatever you like so I'll go three and a half uh, four sorry what will I do three or four and then I'll find my charcoal liner which has gone to a safe place there it is have to have my charcoal liner so I'll do I'll do four centimeters now I made an executive decision so I just simply put my ruler down put the red mark from my point and then I put a little chalk line here so I'll just do that and then I use my ruler and I go right across that depth of my point do the same to the other side put your finger up there bring this nice and flat and you can see it forms a point so you can't really do it wrong and if I go like this I think that'll be easier for you to see okay so I've measured down here and I'm going to measure from there up to there and draw a line and that's the base of my bag okay so simple this is the way I do all the bases of every bag that I make so it's not nothing new a lot of you ladies would have done it but it's quite good sometimes to remember it because you forget it it's so simple you don't need to do anything hard okay so now I'm just going to sew from this point here to this point here and that's forming the base of my bag and do the same to the other side so just reverse here because you want it nice and strong and I'll just cut that little thread because it's going to keep bothering me okay keep forgetting I've got my machine set on lock off I don't need to use my reverse button and that one I can just push my knot my machine will lock it and then I can sew and then at this end I can just push my scissors and my machine set to lock off and cut my thread it's rather awesome so that's what I should have done so there we are so there you have the base of your bag done like that and when you turn it through you'll see clearly the size your bag's going to end up and if you want it deeper then you can just sew it deeper so that's now going to be the size of my bag a good size to take to the farmers market to get some tomatoes or something in it's really really nice now here's my bag I have my central mark which I don't need anymore but the side marks I do because what I'm going to do now is show you how to make your handle and you want your front handle to go on the front of your bag and you want it 2.5 or 1 inch from the side seam okay so I'm just going to lay this down to measure it and then I'll re-put the pin in and show you get another pin so I'm marking one um, one inch or 2.5 centimeters from the side seam okay put a pin in there I can take my central pin out I don't need it and I can take my other side pin out so now if you put your bag together clearly you can see that's one inch where's my mark there we are one inch in from your folded side piece the back one when you're going to put your loop in the back it is half an inch from the back seam so I'll just put a pin where the next one needs to go which is half an inch and the same on the other side and that's going to be my loop okay now to make your handle the piece that you've cut off this is your four inch strip of fabric what you're going to do is you're going to iron it in half so you're going to put the raw sides together and you're going to iron it in half all the length of the fabric so it's very 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 simple so you've just simply got your fold there and you've ironed it in half 
Now you're going to open it up before you drop it and you're going to iron your raw edges into the centre. So you take your raw edges and you fold them into the centre mark that you've already made with your iron. And you just go all the way down. I think you'll be making these for friends and families for Christmas because it's a very, very easy, quick bag. Then I'm going to take the other side. And this is a method of doing handles that I use a lot. And you're butting your two raw edges together, which I'll show you clearly in a minute. There we are. So I've put my two raw edges together. Now you simply fold up your bag handle and I'm going to top stitch down both sides. So I'll just press that like that. There's my folded edges and just put them together. Okay. So the other option if you don't want to make fabric handles is to use webbing and um, I'll show you that shortly. Right, so here's my bag handle. So now I'm ready to top stitch. Now because I want to do a nice edge stitching, I'm going to use my foot number 10. Now you all know foot number 10 is the edge stitch foot. When you're using it, you need to move your needle position right or left. So I'm going to move my needle position to the left by three clicks. So it says minus three on my machine. And that's what I'm going to set my machine at so it does a really nice top stitch. So this foot has got a little guide in the centre. You simply just oh, push my lock off button so it knots my th fabric off, my thread off. And then you simply just guide your fabric down the central guide of the foot. And away you go. It's so super duper easy. I love it. I love this foot because I don't have to think. So sew so all the way down one side. And then I'm going to sew all the way down the other side just so it looks nice and even. And you'll notice I didn't bother cutting my thread, I just pulled it around and away I go. There's my handle. Now what I'm going to do, because I need a handle and a loop, I'm going to cut five inches off the end of this handle. Okay, that becomes my loop and this becomes my handle. Right now I'll show you how you sew it onto your bag. So let's start with the front. So lay your bag, it's actually quite handy on top of the sewing machine. Open your bag up and your little marking here is where you're going to put your handle. So from the inside, push the raw edge of the handle right up so it can't go any further, right? Pop a pin in there to hold it. And then get your other half of your handle, making sure you haven't twisted it. Come to the other side of your bag and pop it up till it can't go any further like that and then here's your handle I want you to flip the handle up just like that and then I'll turn it over and show you and then re-put this pin right through that handle now what that's doing is making your handle very very strong so for any bag this is a good way so here I am here my handles just pushed right up to my folded edge then I'm just flipping my handle up, just like that. That's all you do, okay? And putting the pin right through those two double thicknesses of handle. And you only have one handle, remember, so that's your handle done. Now you do exactly the same method for the loop. Okay? So you just put your loop right up to that folded edge. I'm just going to replace that pin just so I can hold it till I get there. 
turn this around so it's not twisted come up the other side like that replace the pin oh I don't want it on that side do I because I'm going to pull it out in a minute and then just flip your loop up so it looks like that okay then turn it over to this side and replace your pin going right through all those layers so you've got quite a lot of thickness there it's absolutely fine and that's a very thick pin let's get a finer one like that so you've got a loop and you've got a handle now I'm going to top stitch it okay so I'm going to take off my sew table and these lovely big sew tables on the 7 series you just push the button inside the sew table and it opens it up this just makes it easier to put my bag around so now I'm just going to sit my bag and I've got my edge stitch foot still on I've got my needle position to the left and I'm going to edge stitch right around the top edge first now the one thing you do need to understand is with the edge stitch foot it has a little bar in the middle and this is the little bar that's in the middle of the foot and it lifts up and down so you can actually lift that bar up when you come to a handle so that you don't push it out of shape so just lift it up and then once you've got it up and over away you go so just lift up that little bar you're not going to break it and I do reverse back over that handle a little way to make it nice and strong so if you see this coming around here beautiful beautiful straight edge when you get to the handle lift the little bar up till you're up over the handle and then you won't have any problems with um, pushing your handle out of the road okay. you can hear it going um, noisier over the thickness so again when you get to your loop lift up that little bar in the center and it's very light you can't you won't hurt it and I just back over it to make it nice and strong on that handle edge okay and that's my loop because there'll be a bit of strength needed to be in that and then remember lift up that's it make sure it's sitting flat you don't want anything twisted very very simple I love this bag and then come around to the other side and just um, lock it off or reverse I'll just lock it off because I've got scissors wonderful wonderful machine the 7 series I love it apart from this beautiful big 10 inch opening here it's a good machine right I'm taking that foot off and I'm just going to replace it with my standard foot and I'm going to push the clear button so it takes all my settings back to normal and then I'm just going to lengthen my stitch length out a little bit because they are set quite low quite close together so if you want to you can do one stitch and you can get your top thread through your foot if it doesn't have an opening just like that so now I'm just running my foot width along my top edge okay so this is just going to give a nice top stitch about a centimeter down maybe not even yeah about a centimeter and now I'm going to top stitch right around my bag cute little bag And this is how you can make a bag just out of a purchase fabric. But next I'm going to show you how to make a, a plain bag look a little bit fancy with ribbon. Or you could use fancy stitches on your machine. I'm not sure we've got, um, I think we might have apples on one of our stitches. But I don't think we've got any cucumbers or carrots. Lock it off. And I'll just cut that top thread. Right, so if I show you on this part, you can see we've got our row of top stitching there, and then I've got my top stitching row with my foot width just further away. So here's your little bag, and this is the size this one has ended up, and then through the handle, and there you have it. And the beauty about it is you're not holding the bags here so you've got a lot more strength in your wrist and you can hold the bag like that when it's a little bit heavier now the next best thing about these bags is when you take your handle out and you want to fold up your bag for storage you just lay your bag down 
fold your side of your bag to the center fold this side of the bag to the center oh knock your bobbin winder on and then you simply roll your bag up like so the handle comes right around the bag and to store it you pop it up through there and you have got the coolest little bag so you can pop that in your handbag and bring it out when you need to do some shopping actually maybe I should be making these ones to for you to buy your fabrics instead of produce but I think that's a brilliant little bag so um, as you can see here I've been a little bit busy I've made bags with olives I've made bags with tomatoes I've made bags with I'm not going to carry my bicycles in this bag but it's a cute little bag with bicycles and I've made bags with kiwi fruit so all these kiwi fruit ones they're all our kiwiana range of fabrics and they're very very sweet now with this fabric here I didn't quite have a fat quarter so I did black handles okay quite sweet aren't they so they're a nice gift to give somebody who has everything and they're a very very handy bag for shopping now that I've done that I just want to show you that in the second half I will be showing you, I beg your pardon, how to do a same bag but we're going to do it with ribbons, a ribbon as a feature. So I'll show you that shortly. So grab a cuppa and I'll see you in a minute.